something else that's been capturing a lot of attention in the United States is once again that entire question over the John F. Kennedy assassination. Now, I know it took place nearly 60 years ago. I wasn't even born when that particular assassination happened. But the question marks around it have never, ever actually gone away. Was there another shooter? Was there a conspiracy? Well, someone who was not very far away from Kennedy when it actually happened has come out with his own statement, and that has led to renewed questions here in the US. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Who killed John F. Kennedy? The 35th United States president was assassinated in Dallas, Texas on the 22nd of November, 1963. He was 46 years old and had been in office for 1,036 days. Former Marine Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for Kennedy's assassination on the same day. Two days later, Oswald too was killed. United States agencies concluded that Oswald assassinated Kennedy and that he acted alone. In 1964, the Warren Commission drew the same conclusion. It's been 59 years, but not everyone is convinced. Over the years, several conspiracy theorists have spoken about a second shooter, that there was someone else that day firing bullets at Kennedy besides Oswald. Some claim it was the second shooter who fired the fatal shot. Here's what happened on the 22nd of November, 1963. John F. Kennedy was in Dallas on a political trip. In the afternoon, he was traveling in a presidential motorcade through downtown Dallas. He was seated on the passenger seat of the presidential limousine. On his left was First Lady Jackie Kennedy. On the seat in front were then Texas Governor John Connolly Jr. and his wife. Around 12.30 p.m. shots were fired at Kennedy. The president's head split open. This is Paul Landis. Back in 1963, Landis was a 28-year-old Secret Service agent. His assignment was to protect the First Lady. On the El Feta day, Landis was riding on the running board of a black Cadillac behind the presidential limousine. Landis is now 88 years old, and he is finally talking about what he saw that day. In his book, The Final Witness, Landis writes about a bullet he found on the presidential limousine. He said, and I quote, It was a completely intact bullet. It had been hidden behind Mrs. Kennedy all the time she was seated. No wonder I had not seen it sooner. I picked it up and quickly examined it. It was approximately two inches long and in almost perfect condition. It was not distorted in any way and had rifle striations running lengthwise along the sides. Man, oh man, I thought, what should I do? The Warren Commission report claims that Oswald fired three bullets that day. The first one missed Kennedy. The second one struck the president and also went on to wound Connolly. The third bullet hit Kennedy's head. It was the fatal shot. The second bullet that has become debatable, the official version claims that the second bullet entered Kennedy near his nape and exited through his throat. The same bullet then went on to strike Governor Connolly. The bullet struck his back, chest, wrist and thigh. And even after all of this, the bullet remained in pristine condition. Critics say this bullet, the magic bullet for its seemingly impossible trajectory and magically pristine condition, the Warren Commission claims this magic bullet was found on Connolly's stretcher. Now Landis is contesting this. He writes, The super bullet hadn't been on Governor Connolly's stretcher in trauma room number two. I recognized it as the bullet I had found in the limo and placed it next to President Kennedy's feet in trauma room number one. 
Basically, Landis assumes the bullet he placed next to the president could have rolled onto Connolly's stretcher, leading authorities to wrongly link it to the governor's injuries. If what Landis is claiming is correct, it means Connolly was hit by a different bullet, meaning there were more than three bullets fired that day. But here's the thing, there were just three shells found on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository from where Oswald is believed to have fired the shots. Does that mean the remaining shots were fired by a second shooter from another location? Conspiracy theorists have been saying this for decades now. Some also believe that the bullet that hit Kennedy's head was never fired by Oswald. Why do they believe so? The Texas School Book Depository was in the rear of the limousine. But the video of the presidential motorcade, captured by a clothing manufacturer, Abraham Zapruder in his Bell and Howell home movie camera shows Kennedy moving backwards as a bullet hits his head. They claim the president's head movement is a clue that the bullet hit him from the front and that it was fired from someone taking a shot at John F. Kennedy from a grassy knoll in front and not the Texas Book Depository. Several books and eyewitness accounts have lent weight to this theory, questioning the official version. Paul Landis, who saw the assassination unfold in front of his own eyes, is the latest. Well, for more on that, I'm now being joined by Glenn Carl, former intelligence officer, um, you know, linked to the CIA. Uh, Glenn, you've been looking at these latest statements that are coming up, and obviously there's a lot of interest around the world. What do you make of the fresh developments? I regret to say, or actually I, I think it's good that I say, um, is sort of much ado about uh, not very much. Uh, the gentleman, the Secret Service officer who has come out with this new book or these new revelations uh, now 60, 60 years uh, after the fact, he has actually stated uh, publicly uh, at the 20th anniversary of the assassination, and I think at the 50th also, they completely contradict what he wrote uh, in his uh, reports while serving as a Secret uh, Service officer uh, in the days following the assassination. I'm afraid uh, that um, it, it, the facts don't substantiate uh, what the gentleman has recently said. Well, Glenn, if you have to ask a lot of people, they still wonder about this. They still think there's a conspiracy. They wonder about the shooter on the grassy knoll. A lot of people have seen the Kevin Costner movie and JFK. So those questions around the assassination aren't going away. You are correct, completely correct, that I think probably a majority of people, many of whom I admire, uh, who I know and, and admire uh, greatly and respect, um, do subscribe or at least claim to be open to conspiracy theory. But we should remember uh, people are inclined to find um, reasons behind uh, all events and in particular terrible traumatic ones like the assassination of President Kennedy which we could all see in the Zapruder film, uh, and which I and many anyone of my generation uh, remembers vividly. Um, but our natural human inclination to find uh, simple explanations uh, often misleads us. So Glenn, your opinion and the opinion of those whom you've interacted with in the intelligence community, there was no conspiracy and there was only one shooter, Lee Harvey Oswald? Yeah, I, yes, I think the, the simple answer is yes, that is correct. Also, we, we aren't uh, uh, any different than anyone else, except that uh, some of us will have worked directly on some of these uh, issues. And and those people on the whole do accept the, the uh, uh, single shooter explanation and find really that the Warren Commission for, with all... Um, recognition of the various flaws or imperfections that it had fundamentally um, identified the, the right story uh, also uh, about the single shooter. Um, seemingly, the, the Cubans uh, knew in advance uh, that Oswald was going to do this, but didn't inform the CIA for understandable reasons, because the CIA and the United States were trying to overthrow Castro. Um, so yes, I think the short answer is my colleagues, uh, experts, do um, 
subscribe to the, uh, ex the the mainstream explanation of the Warren Commission single shooter and and don't accept the the second shooter conspiracy. All right, Jen, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you.